The microburst is one of the simplest flies, and this fly really proves that you don't have to be or have a complex fly in order to be productive. You can cast this with a five weight, absolutely no problem, but my favorite way to fish this is as a top dropper. When I'm using a heavier streamer on the bottom, such as a mini boogeyman or a, a copper top, and what's great is you can use this to help figure out what color the fish are on. So you can run this like a, a white up top. You can run a, a darker color down on the bottom. And the materials for this are extremely simple. You got barbed white marabou. You got some starburst in pearl, lavender, and ice dub in pink. And what I really want to show you is how this looks when it gets wet. So let's take a peek. So now that it's wet, you can see how it all blends together and it absolutely becomes a minnow. And in the water, all the different fibers twitch, undulate, move together, and it just comes alive. So without further ado, let's get tying. All right, so let's get tying. 2460 Daiichi, size number six, Vivas 100 thread. And this fly is all done with a dubbing loop. So let's make our dubbing loop, making it about three times the length of the, the hook. So I'm trying to imitate some small white minnows. So I'm going to use some mottled white marabou. And you can use any color that you want. I'm just going to grab one feather out. Make sure that it's nice and wispy. The feathers are long and straight and the tips themselves are as skinny as possible. Skinnier equals more motion in the water. Now I'm just going to lay that down, get rid of some of those stragglers. All right, and that looks good. Need a little bit more, so I'm just pulling them out to the side. Then I'm going to strip them off and lay them down. And that's about the length of my loop, which is about three inches. Now for additional color, I'm a fan of the Fly Tires Dungeon. So I'm gonna use some Starburst Color in Pearl. And I'm gonna cut it so that the length of the material itself is about equal with the tips. And these fibers are typically about six inches long, so you gotta trim them or rip them. I just choose to, to trim them as opposed to ripping them. And I'm just gonna put a few more in there. Again, I'm going to the tips of the feathers, trying not to go too much further beyond. And it's okay if they go a little bit longer. All right, that's good. The next material that I'm gonna use is also from Fly Tires Dungeon. This is Starburst Fibers in Lavender. Same thing. Now I'm just gonna use them though up the head because at least the way that I, when I look at minnows, I see their heads typically have like a little bit of that lavender, you know, uh, translucency look. So I just wanna stack them in there pretty good. That looks nice. And then the last material I'm gonna use is Ice Dub UV Pink. And again, I'm just gonna put it in what will ultimately be the head of the fly itself. I'm gonna put the pieces in there. Okay, and because I know I've put in so much um, flash at the front, I'm just gonna take a couple more pieces of marabou, and I'm gonna put them right over top. 
and uh, again it's just to make sure that it's not all flash up front that I've got a little bit more of that marabou. I'm just stripping about an inch of materials out. I'm just going to put them right on top. And again, all I'm going to use are the very tips. So this next part is really the trickiest of the whole fly. And I'm going to use my loop and de-loop tweezers. Open them up. And I'm going to very carefully go underneath all the materials, doing my best to capture all of that marabou. And all of my flash. And that looks pretty darn good. Now to trim it, I'm just going to flip it. it. Looks like I missed a couple. It'll still be all right. Now I'm going to trim nice and close. Recognizing that I can always push it in a little bit further and do another trim. I'm just going to dump that. All right. So that looks good. I'm going to leave that there. Bring the vise back. I'm going to put my materials into the dubbing loop. I'm going to grab my stone faux roto dubber. Put the materials back in there. And carefully align everything. So I'm going to gently open up the jaws. I'm going to look at my lengths. That length looks good. These look a little short. I'm going to push them out. Again, I'm just looking for about the length of the hook itself on the outside, maybe a little bit longer. So it looks really good. And I'm looking for a uniform uniformity here in the length. I, I don't need anything shorter or longer. Now I'm just going to come through, trim right next to my thread. Being careful not to trim my thread. Okay, got everything in place. Now I'm going to very slowly start using my roto dubber. When you start with compound twist, you want to start slow, otherwise you're going to fling materials out. Now I can increase speed, and when I get the majority of the material twisted in, I'm just going to grab my Velcro brush and just gently brush things out. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that I maintain that 90 degree angle for the, the marabou and the flash material. And that looks really good. I'm going to just roto-dub it a little bit more. And what you'll notice just by taking a look at the brush itself is that you see you've got that UV that goes all the way through and then up at the head I've got that really nice pink lavender hue and wait till you see how it looks when it's all blended together. And what I just noticed is that um, I didn't tie or bring my thread back far enough so I'm just going to bring it back to the very end of the hook. There we go. And I have to retie. So I can use my roto feature here. I just did a quick half hitch there. All right, I'm gonna hang my thread off of this side. Now I'm gonna start using the rotary feature. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna start preening the materials back, just like that, and start wrapping forward. And just pause, wrap it. And I'm trying to use and maintain a little bit of distance between each wrap. I don't want them, especially in the back, right on top of each other. I want to maintain that distance. Looks good. And the reason why is because if um, you put them on top of one another, then you basically mangle the material and it won't move in the 
water itself. Oh, there we go. You can see that pink starting to blend in. The lavender looks really nice. And a little bit thicker marabou on the head here. And that looks great. I'm gonna stop right there. And I'm gonna tie it off. So I'm gonna come in behind and I'm gonna do two gentle wraps and I'm just trying to wiggle my thread through so I don't pinch anything down. So there's one. And here comes number two. And now I'm gonna wrap in the front two times, three and cinch. Now I've gotta be careful. I certainly don't wanna cut any of that marabou that's up front. good. Again, I'm going to go through with my Velcro brush. And what you can see is with that simple process of going through with the flash and with the marabou, you can really create an amazing looking simple pattern. When you get good at these, you can do them in like two minutes, three minutes tops. All right, I'll get it wet and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Um, it is just insane because it blends together. It gets an amazing profile. And as you can imagine with the um, marabou and you know the flash materials, it just gets this uh, crazy hue and it just comes absolutely alive. And I've seen fish come up on my um, my bigger flies and then they'll just turn around and annihilate, uh, annihilate this. So anyway, it's extremely simple, it's extremely productive, and um, I hope you guys enjoy it.